Hello guys, this is Pita and welcome to Hippie Crow Hub. Last video um, is doing really good right now. I passed 500 views in less than 24 hours, so I'm very excited about it. I hope it keeps going and it's gonna like push through all the algorithms and I'm gonna get like more views in a while. My most viewed video um, has 13,000 views, so I hope this one can match ish that or at least get closer towards it so that would make me move a lot more forward faster so keep passing around keep watching keep commenting keep clicking and liking <laughs> alrighty so today we're gonna work a little more on thrifted items uh, this time it's not so much of a thrift flip or to be honest it doesn't matter how you call it it's still doing work on like old clothing it's just that specifically this time uh, the clothes that i have uh, need a makeover because they need repairs so it's more like a repairing old clothes to make it workable and livable and i'm gonna do one funky upcycle on a denim jacket that I had this idea with. So I'm just gonna go and explain to you what I'm going to do, okay? Okay, I spotted this dress in a thrift and I really loved the, the bottom part, but I really did not like the top part. I mean, this is total like, it's not nice at all. The textile is ripping and this boot pads just wouldn't even fit me. So I'm, I bought it specifically to make a skirt out of it. And I love this little belt. So I'm going to simply cut off the top part and I'm going to like put the sew and put elastic in to just have it like a cute little summer skirt. I really like these skirts lately. So I'm like, why not? Very easy makeover. Okay, I spotted in the thrift this beautiful set. It was a black skirt and a jacket too. It came with the top. It was like a short sleeve button up. I'm going to share it later. I'll got to pull it out of my suitcase now. But the problem with this skirt was is that the elastic is completely dead. It's just like completely useless. So I'm going to cut off this top and again piercing another elastic so it can rouge up on the top and still be like a cute plated skirt i love that it's a little bit sheer so it gives that a little bit nice and sexy vibes okay so this is gonna be that also i found this vintage dress which i am in love and i'm obsessed with i love dresses like that i love this like a super 90s vibes and it's just so sweet and the summer is coming up one problem with it is that it has a rip on the side but that is not a big deal because that is easy to repair so i'm gonna sew um over the lines with a sewing machine this way and that way to just take in that rip also it has like really pointless useless uh, shoulder pads that I'm going to remove so it's gonna be a very flowy nice dress I love dress like that but when I spot a vintage item I want to put it on the rack because upcycle clothing handmade with upcycle textiles and a little bit of vintage is like the thing so and if nobody wants it I could keep it after <laughs> always say I really want that item but I then end up producing so much I can't catch up wearing it Okay, and this vintage dress, this is like super vintage and I think it's so gorgeous. But a problem is that it has stains here. I don't know if you can see there. It has this yellow stains on this side and on this side. And they only come in sleeves so and in the back. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's like because of the underarms and the sweat or deodorant or whatever it is but never mind and i already washed the dress and the stains did not come out i don't want to treat it with chlorine because this is like a cream textile and i have a feeling i'm gonna ruin it anyway if i try to bleach it so also i am going to cut away 
the sleeves completely like that so it will become kind of like a open shoulder vest and I might need to open up the the stitching here a little bit so that I can from like this pocket just narrow the dress down slightly to just complete this because if I cut it like like that this will be like sticking out so I might have to sew it like to make it blend in if that makes sense okay so I'm gonna see what I can do with this but I love the color combination I love this kind of ginger copper brown and this cream white cream cream yellowy white and I think it's very gorgeous and it's very elegant and quite timeless really like this kind of thing you totally wear it now why not okay and the denim upcycle so I thrifted this denim, denim jacket um, specifically for this upcycle that I have in mind it is a really nice like denim jacket already as it is I love that it's like thick it's got a little little like scrapes and you know just like denim should be what I don't love is that it has this kind of like yellowy wearing out kind of situation here which is not a big deal because I'm going to do some bleaching on this so I'm gonna bleach up the collar inside here maybe with a sponge and pat it gently also i i noticed i was watching a tv show and i saw this girl wearing a denim short and they were bleached with like a big polka dots and i thought it was so cute so i'm gonna try to attempt to bleach polka dot this denim jacket and after i do all the bleaching i'm gonna wash it and then I have this macrame wall art that I made a while ago, but as a wall art, it's kind of like losing its shape a little bit, but I love the French and I love this kind of like a dragonfly, butterfly, whatever you want to call it. I want to remove it from the stick and I want to sew it at the back of the jacket. And I think it's going to be like a really cute upcycle okay well i had an idea it was itching me and i had to get it done so love it or hate it who cares it's a fun project okay but i bet i'm gonna love it and i'll put it on the rack if it works out nice if not i can always wear it no loss and i can reuse that driftwood stick for another wall art so it's pretty simple so far if i find something else i will throw into the video but as if right now this is what i'm gonna work with and i'm gonna share the process so let's get to work all right so we're gonna get some chlorine in this bowl and with a little bit of water i want it to be strong because i want the the polka dots to be nice and visible uh, and I'm not sure if I should try using this brush and kind of spin it a little bit. I don't know how would that work. But also I'm thinking maybe I need to cut out this size. I'm using this too because I like the size of this. Maybe I need to cut out a circle for a sponge to create like a stamp for that. But to start, I will see how this brushing works on the collar because I want to like bleach the entire inside part anyway so and I need it to kind of even out with this like line right so I'm just gonna try and improvise here so I'm gonna put some of this I, to be honest I don't need that much probably but just so that I don't have to remix the solution and then it would be like a different color I'll add a little bit of water so that I don't like turn this completely orange. So, okay, let's dip and test. Okay, this is totally improv. Okay, I'm just simply brushing and it's covering the whole thing so I'm not getting gonna get like 
lines or anything. It's not like paint. It's just to get that wetness on. Okay, I hope the bleaching will go in. If it goes through the other side a little bit, I really don't mind because I want it to be like funky slightly anyway. So let's see if I'm gonna get any color change. If not, then I'll have to add a little bit more chlorine or maybe even dip the entire thing into the bowl. Let's see. Okay, I'll soak it through just a little more. I think I'm starting to get a little more bleaching here. But for the dots, for the polka dots, I think I'm gonna have to go with straight up chlorine for it to really burn it in because this is too mild. It's taking also quite a bit of time. Okay, so my polka dots are not coming through as strong as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to, I don't know if this chlorine is not so strong or is it because this denim is really strong? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna do a little bit of this kind of like, this is just general chlorine and I'm gonna do a little bit of a raindrop situation. Might come through a little more of some sort of effects. I don't wanna do tie dye on it. I really want to do just like a really experimental thing with this. I mean, something must come through at some point, I believe, even if it's gonna be completely nuts. Total splash. All right, I'm gonna dump this in a washing machine now.
Okay, guys, so I got carried away a little bit and I forgot to press the button to film. I spotted another stain on the skirt. So I decided to split it in half and that made it easier to just completely separate the sides of the top. So this is going to be also a cute top with like a little bit of a brown underneath. And I'll turn this into a skirt so it could also be worn together. Just kind of with an extra little skirt layer on top of the skirt. It's one of those like vintage styles which I actually like. Or it could be worn separately. This could go nicely on pants. I really like those tops with tiny little uh, rouging in the bottom. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Like I said, this is a beautiful vintage dress, but it definitely wouldn't be resold for a higher price on its own because it has stains and damages. So this is a cool experiment for me to play around and see what I can come up with. This is day two for me, still same video for you, but here we are, my jacket that I decided to bleach up. Okay, so I did not get those exact polka dots that I wanted. I think those polka dots would have to be done with the paint stamps, like textile paint. So I'm going to experiment with that idea like on another project, but the end result with the drizzles of the bleach, it turned out really nice. Look how nice the collar looks. It's definitely freshened up. And the other side is dark. So when it rolls up, it has like a little nice gentle accent. And I love how the little tiny cloudy patches are happening. This is exactly like perfect match for my idea to add this onto the back. I'm actually really excited about it. I think this is going to be a really fun project. So my other sewings are done and I am going to wear the things I repaired, only the things that fit me <laughs> and the ones who, who, who don't fit me, uh, that don't fit me, I will just share on the hanger. I also uh, just remembered another dress that I thrifted that needs to be repaired. Yes, how exciting. Okay, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous vintage dress. I believe it's wool and it has this beautiful drape at the back and I totally see like Christmas, 
situation happening here or like just a beautiful dress out or theater or something like that i love how in this dress still in a great condition the only problem is that this shoulder of detail accent is ripped and i bought this dress like that knowing this that but i'm going to attempt to repair it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this ripped leather out of this i'll sew the stitches to this inside textile to flatten it out and then i'm going to cut out this piece of brown leather i only i don't have red leather i only have like white blue and brown and as i put it on top it just the brown feels like the most kind of like blending into this situation so i'll do that the tone is just matching better i find okay and i'll cut out a piece of leather that needs here to be here and i'm going to use fabric glue to glue it in and i hope that will work and of course i'll use the sewing to keep it together so that the whole outfit is not relying on the glue and the leather so that the leather is just covering up the damage okay so there you go this will be one more little fix up and now we gotta sew this so i didn't film absolutely every single item of sewing because you know just stitching the whole i think is unnecessary to film but yay, 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 hey, hey, by the way, my last week's video is doing really good. By now, I have 1,400 views on that video. I got a bunch of new subscribers, a lot of comments, which I'm so happy to always engage with the audience. That makes me happy and also gives me uh, feedback. And I love when people like explain to me what they liked or maybe didn't like and most all positive and even the things that they say oh i wouldn't have done it that way okay great cool thanks for letting me know i also just want to remind people that when i share my projects and my craftings i'm not telling or giving people exact recipes that they have to follow i am using my creativity and i am sharing what my process of creation is i'm also sharing uh my personal taste i'm sharing my ideas also uh when people um think that i shouldn't have done it this way this way and they're convinced that the certain thing that had to be that way well i'm the one who's holding the textiles in my hand and who tried the outfit on and i know that something is not right so i change it in a way that in reality here is working right and again everyone's entitled for their opinions and that is all cool uh it's great but um at the same time i'm like if you have different ideas and you want to do it differently go ahead and do it differently no one's stopping you and like i said i don't believe in in following exact recipes i am this kind of person i don't use exact recipes even for cooking i wing my food i make it up i invent new dishes every single day and sometimes it is amazing and i can't recreate it because i don't remember what i put in it <laughs> so it's always spontaneous same with sewing and crafting I, I didn't go to like a university of the fashion, whatever. So when I sew, I don't, I do it how it works for me. I do it how, how I think it's practical and simple and easy. Sometimes less is more. And yeah, and I like, I, I'm always super open um, about the fact that I sew as a homemaker. I am not a fashion guru. I am not teaching people how to sew. I am literally sharing how I create and how I do this and what I do. And so, yes, welcome. And I'm happy to have you here. I just wanted to remind people and clarify that because I don't know if some people think that because I am talking about like clothes and upcycling and sewing, that I claim to be 
somebody who knows everything about sewing and fashion. I really don't. I, and I, I'm figuring it out as I go. And uh, yeah, so let's figure it all out together. So, and, and we can learn from each other. So yes, I do. I, I do appreciate people commenting and I welcome people to comment that maybe give me some ideas if I struggle with something or I say, hey, you know, there's another way that you could do that. And that is totally cool. Um, yeah, once in a while I get a comment where it's like, oh, this one, you know, I wish you didn't do that. Well, <laughs> you can go again, not a thrift dress, you know, but hey, it doesn't matter. Let's get sewing. guys so this has turned out to be a really annoying process for me because I had to stop like 20 times to like change yarn in the bottom then untangle yarn in the bottom then change the needle twice because I broke it twice but it's not just because of this particular project it was just like the timing and the coincidences of a few other things but also there were a few uh, harder bits to sew um, and one of the bits where I thought it's this to blame, but it was my own fault because the sleeve got tucked under and I was sewing like triple amount of den denim without realizing. So this has turned out to be really like, but I'm going to get it done because I'm stubborn enough and, or maybe I just have a really good willpower. <laughs> I swear that. The two are so hard to differentiate sometimes, sometimes, or being stubborn and sticking with something is maybe, maybe on like a little bit dumb reasons or willpower is something that you just don't quit and you keep going and you achieve it in the end because you don't quit. Uh, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> I hope that this time this is going to just be smooth because all I need to do is just go so like in the middle of this triangles here and there and there's no really hard part so fingers crossed i can just get it done now and that's it
Okay, guys, so this is the skirt. I did not expect it to actually fit me. Uh, the belt is barely uh, tying up. I had to use a safety pin. So it probably would fit better like a, a just tiny bit smaller human than me. But anyway, you get the idea. So it was like a dress that the top was completely destroyed. But this is still perfect, beautiful little item. So this will go on my rack. Such a simple upcycle. So even if you see in a thrift store some item that is like on sale and you're only going to pay a couple of dollars, it's still worth getting it if you see potential to, uh, if you can change it up and then like turn it into something else, even though it just needs tiny little um, changes and upcycles. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so this suddenly became like a lot more like modern, funky look. And you know what? I really like it. Um, the skirt fits me too, so it's not so long anymore. And this uh, could be closed in a little bit more, but I like this idea. And you know what? I would totally wear this with Converse because it has this like, I don't know, this very cute different funky look it's kind of like similar idea to that other dress from my last video that i cut it and turned it into a jacket and a skirt so it could be worn uh, separately as you can see the skirt is really simple and it could be worn separately but together is really nice i think this would be a perfect summer outfit and again this i don't think the finishes is like completely perfect because this vintage textile was so thick and like dense to sew, like my needle was like trying to pierce through the textile. So the stitching is not like perfectly glam, but that's if you look super close. And I left a tiny little pocket in there. I don't know what you can put in there, but I decided to keep it in. And yeah, and like I said, the reason why I cut this item up, if it was clean and no stains and, and not, no problems, I would have left it as it was because it was a beautiful dress. But because it had stains here and another stain here that was not going to be washed out um, or, you know, like I said, I could have tried treating it with the chlorine, but I believe that I would have like just destroyed the textile and it would have created different shades of colors. So... You know what? This is a perfect way to upcycle the textiles and still maintain a little bit of that vintage vibe. And I think it's really adorable. Here is the skirt that I changed the elastic band, okay? So, and I mean, this is not necessarily the look, you know, like this waistcoat and this, I'm just popping it on to kind of like, you know, not be completely naked on the top. <laughs> so I would wear the skirt with Converse, like in summer, maybe with a different top, maybe with a t-shirt. I like that it kind of like, it's slightly sheer there and it has like a very like a vintagey vibe but at the same time you can just funk it up and do it you can do whatever you want with it so i said it comes with a jacket originally and i bought this set as a two-piece because i saw potential and oh, my belt here okay so this is like a large size but I actually really like this blaze, like kind of like a blazer kind of jacket thing. I love the golden buttons. And again, this is a taste thing. I may, I, maybe I wouldn't wear it directly with the skirt, 
maybe I would wear this separately. Uh, like this kind of um, jacket pro on would be awesome with a pair of jeans in like summer. But if you would wear this, and to be honest, sometimes I like like funky looks anyway. So let's say we would wear this. And you could like wear high heels or nice shoes, but right now I'm just like showing how this thing looks like. Okay, and then I would probably put a belt on. And here, you see what I mean? It's totally wearable. And if you put like funky accessories and like funky shoes or, and this could totally be a look. I don't know, I still think it's cute, but again, this could be worn separately as really nice like items. I bought a set anyway, cause I think there's potential to it and not much needs to be done. And I do like oversized baggy clothes. I'm gonna try to put it on the rack at some point, not uh, this month, but soon. But yeah, but this little skirt, I totally think is like a very, very cute, simple item. And I do like skirts this length. It just has like a certain, comfort and elegance vibes and yeah and you could wear this kind of skirt with a blazer do like a sporty look like um yeah with trainers converse easy loafers sandals totally all right okay so this is gonna be a look an actual look that i love I love these kind of dresses. They're so like kind of 90s, like maybe early 2000s. So, you know, I I don't know. I, I always imagine my mom when I see dresses like that, but I really love it and they kind of back in and you can just wear it so flowy. This would totally be my vibe. But because it's a vintage dress, I'm gonna hang it on the rack at some point soon for summer. I only did a small repair, which was a rip on the side. And it is very, very simple and, uh, you know, easy. So an item like that could have been completely disposed, but it's awesomely wearable now. And so the look I'm talking about, this denim jacket with this dress, I am so obsessed and I love this jacket, how it turned out with Converse dress and check this out. Okay, so this is the final look and oh my gosh, isn't this an amazing dress? Like, all right, so I bought it for $5. It was on the 50% sale at a thrift store and it was priced probably like $9 or $10. And after 50% sale, I probably paid ish plus minus $5, okay? No more than that. And obviously it had like a rip that I needed to repair, but it was manageable. This is working completely fine. And this is such a 
gorgeous look. I am obsessed. Hello, hello. I would totally wear it to like some sort of like a Christmas party or a night out in a in a cooler weather. This is just so elegant and sexy and classy and vintage. Seriously, nothing else needs to be done. This dress is perfect. And unless it actually has damages, vintage clothes do not need to be destroyed, I believe. Unless it has like a really silly situations like oversized shoulder pads that are not even comfortable to wear. Yeah. all the looks for today and this is how I repair vintage short thrifted clothes that are not perfect as it is but need a little bit editing but have lots of potential just with a drop of creativity and very basic skills all right guys thank you so much for watching Please like, comment, and subscribe. I love and peace to all. Stay creative and let's keep doing these cool things that we do with clothes and everything around us. See you in my next video every Monday, 10 a.m. Bye-bye.